All right, today I have a little bit different of a project for 12 foot, 12 volt. I'll actually be taking this PEX here and installing it to the sink down towards the water pump and down towards the outlet that I have to the outside spigot. All right, so as you can see here, I just used that rubber tubing that came from this 15 gallon tank and pump um, from the box and I took some sprinkler T connector and I actually had a problem with one of them where it was leaking some water at one point. So it's not that black stain right there. That's something that's a little bit different, but um, that's why we're replacing it with PEX is so we can do a bit of an upgrade from the leak that I had. this little rubber gasket which seals up against the inside of that and so that's how we're going to put it on here and then we will put the PEX into the end of that and the next part here um, I'm using the kind that has this little silver cap make sure you're nice and straight on the end that over and that one's going to go on this side. So that pops down right over. And then you take your crimp tool. Okay. All good, all the way down, nice and even. Just going to crimp it. All right, so what I ended up doing here was I just got this trimmed real nice around, trimmed that in, took the two by four inside, cut that, and then added some extra screws. I have a little extra support on this. So good to go for putting the sink in now. All right, let's try putting the sink in here one more time. hiccup. This is half inch male. This is half inch female. So I'm going to run in the house, see if I can do anything about that. This is not exactly ideal for what I wanted. It's not CPVC, it's just regular PVC. So it's kind of what I was getting away from a little bit, but this piece here is thick wall PVC and these are these are thicker so I'll just have to keep in mind to make sure I let this drain if I'm worried about freezing temperatures or anything but that's what I've got it was in the in the garage it was basically free because I already had it so I will go ahead and use it install it now. All right, so now let's go ahead and place this onto there. So I've got the crimps all done for this section. Um, it's crimped on down there, through that bend, and up. Now, unfortunately, I do have to use one of these guys on this flexible tubing here. 
I'm gonna do some tests to see and make sure that that holds up to pressure. This next part is really interesting for my setup. When I first started with the water system, I paid too much money for one of these little drop-in pumps. And what I had was a five gallon jug and a hose that came off to this to the sink that you could see earlier in the video, it was a clear one. I would drop that into the jug, turn on the pump and off I'd go, no problem. It's actually a pretty quiet pump too. So I'm continuing to have this as a backup, just in case something happens with this, this onboard pump that's here with this. And what I'm gonna do is this drops all the way to the bottom of the tank and so I can grab the water if I needed to. I'm gonna measure some of this black tubing again and get the right length for the white pipe. And I'll use a piece of connecting PEX here, this stuff. So I'll get it to the right length and connect it all together. So before I'll be able to fully test it, I'm gonna put my drain back on. Otherwise it'll be a lovely little mess. All right, it's been a few days now and I waited a few days on purpose so that I could go ahead and add my drop-in pump directly into my cold water line here. I ordered some stuff off of eBay. These are check valves. So they just allow the water one direction, which means I now have one side of my faucet where I have the pump directly from the tank to this check valve. It prevents water from coming back to the pump from this pump that I could drop in. Same thing on this line for that pump. The regular pump is not going to pump water out of my drop-in pump. And a very big third benefit, if I'm at a site with water hookups, I can hook my hose directly to this line and not have to worry about back feeding into the tank or back feeding out of this pump. So in all three situations, I am totally covered. Now let's go get some water to throw in this tank. All right, so I've got four gallons in the tank that I'm using for my testing here. And what I like to do is open the faucet first, let the water come through, get the air out of the system, and then I can close it up to make sure that it, uh, you know, I could have water on demand without having to flip the switch every time. So faucet's open. And there we go, we got some water. The dripping that we're hearing there is the uh, water coming out of the pipe to my makeshift gray water tank. But I don't see any leaks in the system whatsoever. Perfect. All right, that wraps it up for this quick little modification for my plumbing in the trailer. Uh, the PEX installation was very quick. The longest part of the whole process was just going to the hardware store and picking up the PEX pieces as well as waiting for the check valves to come in the mail. So it, uh, it's a little bit ironic with the, the rubber hose as part of the tank pump to the PEX system and the drop-in pump to the PEX system, but it is what it is. Um, I wanted to put PEX into as much as possible so that it would last as long as possible. And that way I don't have to worry about it near as much in the future with leaks. So totally worth the installation. Go ahead and like the video if you liked it. Subscribe for all the fun stuff going on and we'll catch you guys next time. Bye.